Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about pre-scan normalize. Usually, this is a parameter which is set and forget. However, there are different options with the pre-scan normalize. We can get images from this to this. Let's dive into this topic and see what other benefits there are with pre-scan normalize. For those who are new, my name is Mac again. I'm an Amarai Redographer. In my chat, I'm covering things from basic to advanced Amarai topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. Pre-scan normalize is usually a parameter where you not, do not really touch, right? Because it's set to forget. However, I did some few tests there today. So I'm very eager to show you the results to see if there are any benefits. And I was very surprised with one parameter. So without further ado, let me show you the results. All right, it's very easy to show you this uh, whenever you're doing spine. So I'm going to show the benefits versus having this on or off and different options. So as you can see here, it's going from very bright in the near the coil, which is the spine. And it's very dark in front of here. And something here is a little bit better and getting even better and better. So let's see the different options here. So here the different pre-scan normalizes off. It's moderate, it's normal, and then it's broad range. Okay. With that said, we can move further on to this. What does it do? Whenever you are on a scanner and you have a different parameters which you don't understand, what you can do is just push F1 on the keyboard and you can have a little handbook for further understanding. With pre-scan normalized pattern, you can select normalization filter that reduce image intensity variation. This is exactly what we see in going from off to having on. You can see that whenever the, the anatomy is near the coil, it's very bright. Further away from the coil, it's getting darker and darker. This is something we don't want. We want the image to be homogeneous as possible. So they are different here. You can read. Uh, you can do a further reading. So like I show you, having off, we having uh, normal broad range, moderate. So I will leave it there. I did a further testing on another another anatomy just to see if there are any benefits because we know that whenever you have the spine. The, the anatomy can be a little bit further away from the coil if the patient is, is uh, large. Before we go so, I just want to show you one more thing. So this is a video I made where we change in the window level. You can see clear what happens here. So let's change the window level here now. They are totally, I stopped there. They are totally in the identical, the window level across the images here. But now we're having off, you can see we get burned very fast, but in the area when it's near the coil is still bright. On the moderate, it's a little bit better. On the normalized normal, you can see it's getting even better. And on the broad range, it's getting better and better. So for spine imaging, I usually use broad range. And this was done on the 3T. So whenever you're on 1.5, take also a further look into that. It should be on the pre-scan normalized as an option, a set and forget. But play around with the broad range and see if there are any benefits on 1.5 as well. So I did one more thing on the brain. So this is a 32 channel on the brain on 3T, of course. And then we did it off compared to broad range. So looking at off, it's bad, right? Because the signatance is very bright in the upper part of the brain. And the lower part is getting darker and darker. So usually we use the normalize, which is a standard option. But then let's take a look at the reconstructions here. So using the broad range, you can see one more thing I noticed is that in the middle part of the brain, it's much more homogeneous across the brain compared to here. You get a little bit signal loss or inhomogeneous. And here it's getting darker and darker. So this put me into thought that, hey, maybe I should check a little bit regarding the broad range when it comes to the brain imaging. So you should use normal. I never thought about more about that because normal is more like a standard set to forget and it usually works great. However, in this test patient right here, you can see that it's getting dark. So I find it better on the broad range. And nonetheless, it's a topic where you need to test out a little bit yourself, talk with your radiologist to see what's benefit and what's not benefit and what's good and not good. It's not like this is the best, this is the baddest. You need to find something in between, talk with your radiologist, with physician, and cooperate regarding this because it's a very important parameter. And this is a weird wake up call for me when it comes to brain imaging. You shouldn't use normal, but then I can see the broad range is seems to be good as well. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, pre-scan normalize is a very important parameter. Usually, it's set on the 
uh, normal. However, for spine imaging, I really use broad range because you can see the difference is good. And I was very surprised about the braid imaging today because in the broad range, you can see that the middle part was much clearer or better. So this is a thing I'm really gonna take a further look into in the future. Before we close up, I do have a question for you. Usually whenever you're using pre-scan normalize, what kind of options do you use for different organs? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell and get a ding ding whenever new things from me are coming up. Until next time, take care and I see you around.